Welcome to the 2014-2015 registration presentation. The high school counselors who will be working with you during the next four years are Mr. LaCourt, Mrs. Krim, Mr. Lottenslager, Mr. Miller, and Mrs. Bowersox. You will find their email and phone extensions on the high school guidance website. All of the counselors are well versed in all aspects of high school education and all that it offers you. They welcome parents to contact them with any questions or concerns and appreciate that you are listening to this presentation. First, let's review the registration card, how to complete the card, and high school courses required for graduation. Each of you should have a ninth grade registration card. Check to make sure at the top left it says ninth grade selection. You must register for at least five and one half credits. Using a pen, write your legal name including your middle initial. Do not use a nickname or an alias. If your last name is hyphenated, please include the full last name. You may not realize it, but often we have many students with the same last and first name. We need the legal name, including your middle initial, to make certain we're dealing with the right student and the right card. Also, include your email address and cell phone number. This is so we can contact you over the summer if a question arises concerning your schedule. Please do not write in the block on the far right. This is only for use by the counselor. Using a pencil, you will circle your course choices. You must follow the teacher recommendations. If your parent has any question about a recommendation, he or she must speak directly to your teacher. Note the symbol key in the lower right-hand corner. An asterisk is a semester course, the pound signed hash mark is a dual enrollment course, and an at sign means that there is an application that you must complete for that course. There's only a few ninth grade students who will be taking a dual enrollment course. If you have any questions, please see your counselor. <clears throat> if you are an athlete or if you intend to participate in Perry High School sports next year, write the sports you will be participating in on your card. This is important. Over the summer, your counselor will be looking at your schedule to make certain you have enough courses each nine weeks to meet eligibility. If you do not indicate your sports, you may find that you will not be eligible to play sports. If you are on an IEP, you must circle yes. This way, your counselor can make sure your IEP is being followed. Parents must sign the registration card. Failure to bring a signed, registra a signed registration card may mean that your course selections are entered last and you may not receive all your choices. Your due date is February 18th. Please review the back of the schedule card. Again, it will list the minimum class requirements for each school year. You must meet minimum requirements to graduate. Also, the drop policy is listed and the athletic eligibility policy is listed. Freshmen, you must take an English, Math, Science, World History, Health, and Physical Education course. Again, students must take at least five and one-half credits. Be sure to count the credits and mods when figuring out your freshman year schedule. A common question is, what about summer gym? Summer gym applications will be available in April, and Edison will be notified when those applications are ready to be distributed. You must fulfill all of the course requirements in order to graduate from high school. A new, requirement, a new requirement is two semesters of fine art between grades 7 through 12. But remember, colleges are looking for one high school credit of fine art. This is the college core agreed upon by Ohio public colleges and universities. These are the minimum high school courses that you need to complete in order to be successful in college. Remember, each school may have slightly different requirements. It is up to you to know what requirements are required by the colleges or universities that you are thinking of applying to during your senior year of high school. Bring your completed and signed registration card to your English teacher by February 18th. 
The counselors must review each schedule prior to meeting individually with students. Please write this date on your registration card now, due February 18th. Each of you should have received a copy of the course registration booklet. You will also find a digital copy on the high school guidance website under the registration scheduling tab. The course registration booklet will list the course name, whether it is a semester or year long course, number of credits, the class is worth, course description, and any prerequisites required to take the course. The booklet also contains information on college, NCAA eligibility, diploma with honors, CT programs, and graduation requirements. It is important that courses are selected thoughtfully and with care. Think about what you want to do when you graduate from high school and what college you hope to attend or what career field you hope to find employment. High school offers you an opportunity to try out courses and programs that you may find interesting. The master schedule is built around the number of requests for each course. It's important that both you and your parent select and carefully review the registration card, verification sheet, and the schedule you will receive at the beginning of the year. High school counselors are available two weeks before school and after school if you need to see them about your schedule. <clears throat> Students have until the third day of the school year to add a first semester or all year class and three weeks to drop a first semester or all year class. Students have until the third day of the second nine weeks to add a semester class or three weeks to drop a second semester class. No schedules will be rearranged or reconfigured to fit in a, another elective once the school year begins. Classes dropped after the drop date earn an F. Students, you have from now through August to look at your schedule and alter it with parental and counselor permission. No core courses will be changed without the recommending teacher's permission. The drop policy is strictly enforced. And as you can see, you have plenty of time to get the schedule that you wish. Currently, there is discussion at the state level to discontinue the OGT and replace it with the park exam. You will be informed of any changes as information becomes available. At this time, the OGT is the state test administered in 10th grade. Students must pass the OGT as part of the state graduation requirement. Students who have been retained one year or who have a GPA of 3.5 or higher and want to graduate early must meet with their counselor before the end of the second semester of your freshman year. Students wishing to graduate early must also successfully complete English 10 and Geometry in summer school between the freshman and sophomore year and pass any required state exam prior to graduation. If you have questions concerning early graduation, please contact your counselor. Athletes, read this page. You must maintain and pass at least five classes each nine weeks that are worth at least one half credit to maintain eligibility. It is recommended, however, that you take six classes. You must indicate on your schedule card what sports you will be participating in next year in order for your counselor to check your schedule and make certain you have enough courses to maintain eligibility. It is your responsibility to check your schedule to verify that you have enough classes <clears throat> each nine weeks to keep you eligible. Likewise, it is your responsibility to inform the counselor whenever you are dropping a class. NCAA eligibility is entirely different than high school eligibility. You must read the NCAA pages in the course book and go to the NCAA eligibility website to become informed of what is required to play sports in college. Due to new NCAA standard courses required for eligibility need to be planned out beginning freshman year. If you have questions please see your counselor. When you are a junior, that is when you sign up with NCAA Eligibility Center. A student, you need to understand how to calculate your core NCAA GPA. The NCAA GPA is not the same as the high school GPA. 
the NCAA GPA will also determine what score you will need to earn on the ACT or SAT in order to be eligible to play college sports your freshman year in college. It is recommended that you speak to your counselor early on, like freshman year, if you do not understand how to choose your high school courses so that you will be eligible for NCAA play upon graduating high school. Class rank and top scholastic honors are explained in the booklet. The diploma with honors informs a college, university, or employer that the student has completed a curriculum that is more challenging than the basic college preparatory curriculum. An honor seal will be placed on your diploma. Your transcript will be stamped with honors diploma. And your name will be marked in the graduation bulletin as graduating with honors. And last, you will be permitted to wear the blue honor cord when you graduate from high school. Perry High School is fortunate to offer a wide variety of advanced placement courses. Students must have a teacher recommendation to take a course. There are no AP courses offered to freshmen. AP courses begin sophomore year with AP history. However, placement into this AP history course will rely on what you earn in world history and English your freshman year. If you hope to take AP courses through your senior year, you need to work hard and earn good grades to be recommended. The International Baccalaureate, or IB program, is for our top academic students. Students are required to complete specific courses their freshman and sophomore year in order to be eligible. PHS and Canton South offer many college prep, technical career programs, and career technical programs. Easy for me to say. These are two-year programs which begin in the junior year. In the college prep programs, students will complete college prep courses and learn career skills in the program. Most of the programs also offer opportunities to earn college credit and certification. Career programs offer career skills and many offer certification. All programs have a lab setting where you apply what you learn in class. It is important that as an incoming freshman, you pass all your classes both freshman and sophomore year. Priority is given to students who have completed the program core courses found on the back of your schedule card. Students will learn about, visit programs, and, in, and if interested in taking a program, will complete an application fall semester of sophomore year. Eighth graders, remember, your freshman grades are taken into consideration when you apply for a CT program. The PSEO program is open to all qualifying students grades 9 through 12, but college rarely accepts students in grades 9 and 10. This program is typically for junior and senior students. The qualifying student attends the college campus and completes college courses. All interested students and parents must attend an informational meeting this February 6 in order to be considered for this program. PHS has many dual enrollment courses offered at the high school. You may go to the PH website, click on Guidance, then Dual Enrollment at PHS for a full listing of courses, transfer information, and eligibility requirements. An informational meeting is held in October and February of each year. Parent and student are required to attend the meeting each year if the student is considering taking a dual enrollment course. Only qualifying freshmen who are notified of acceptance may take the two dual enrollment courses offered freshman year. All students who qualify are permitted to begin taking dual enrollment courses beginning sophomore year provided they have met all the admission criteria and attended the meetings. Students at Perry High School have the opportunity to begin and or earn a general associate of arts degree while at Perry High School. Qualifying 8th grade students will be notified in February and invited to attend an informational meeting. If these students fulfill the college admission requirements, they are permitted to take the two dual enrollment courses offered during the freshman year. All other students may begin taking dual enrollment courses sophomore year, 
provided they meet the college admission requirements. Each course offered at PHS is listed in the course registration booklet. The course number, credit, grade levels permitted to take the course, whether or not it is a semester or year-long course, the number of mods the course requires, a course description, and prerequisites are listed. Please take the time to read this information. It may save you time when you meet with your counselor to register. There is one new course for freshmen and sophomore next year, and that is basic construction, an all-year course that is worth one credit. For those of you that are recommended for honors courses, please keep in mind the extra work that comes with these courses. Oftentimes, the student is surprised at the amount of reading, writing, and homework required by these courses. Our honors courses will challenge you, expand your knowledge, and give you a good background for college. So, now you want to create your schedule. First, you begin by listing all the required courses and the amount of mods required by each course. Include one mod for lunch and the number of mods you wish to have for study hall. This is what it would look like. By taking the required courses and lunch, a student, a typical student, will have used 11 or 12 mods. This means you would have seven to eight mods of study hall, or approximately three hours worth. Please note, some of you will be in advanced science and some of you will be in advanced math. Please take note of how many mods those co courses will require out of your day. So now we've revised the schedule. What we've done is we've added a world language and two electives. Now you would still have three mods of study hall, so if that was too much, you could also take another full credit of courses. Also note that health and phys ed would most likely be taken opposite semesters, and art and speech would also be taken opposite semesters. What that means is perhaps art would be taken first semester and speech would be scheduled into second semester during the same mods. So, points to remember. Try not to overload yourself with honors classes. If you feel that you are truly capable of taking all honors classes, then go and you have been recommended, please do so. But please do so with thought and care. We have found that many times students are overwhelmed with the amount of work. Likewise, try not to under-schedule. Too many study halls can lead to boredom, and believe it or not, poor grades. You will receive a verification sheet on March 5th. This is going to list the classes that you chose during scheduling. You need to look it over and make sure that there are no errors. If you have decided to remove a, ca a class, cross it out. If you've decided to add a class, you will write it in. No course no core course selections can be changed without the core course teacher's signature. Your parent will sign the form and you will return it to the guidance office no later than March 12th. This is the most difficult part of scheduling the conflicts. Conflicts are courses that do not schedule because they either conflict with another course or they have filled and there is no room. We do our best to try and move courses around within your schedule so that you will receive the maximum number of requested classes, but there's some that we cannot fix. These are usually when you're taking a full schedule with no study halls, taking a large number of honors classes, and or taking band, choir, and honors classes. Remember, most of these type of courses are only offered one time during the day. So the more that you request, the more likely a conflict will arise. Also, there are some electives that will fill up fast and that will cause a conflict. We do our best to get you the courses that you've requested. So, we will call your parent when there is a conflict that we cannot resolve. Remember, 
We are also working with the three other high school grades in addition to the freshman class. We will call you as soon as we can. When we call, we ask for patience and understanding. Remember, we're here working for you. So, final note. Please remember to circle all selections in pencil and sign and return your card to your language arts teacher no later than February 18th. After February 18th, please bring your completed and signed card to your counselor. Thank you for your time.